Nothing? Uh huh. So what's going on this week? Um, nothing at all. Really? Yeah. I mean, nothing spectacular, at least. No Taylor Swift concerts or anything? Well, not for me. Uh, Paige is flying out to Denver tonight to go see Ed Sheeran with her friend Holly. Ed Sheeran? Ed Sheeran. That's about it. Sounds like fun, maybe. I don't know. I don't listen to Ed Sheeran. Oddly enough, I don't either. That is very odd. I mean, I've heard some of his songs because, you know, the internet, but that's about it. I honestly can't say that I've actually heard any of his songs. I probably have. I yeah. know you guys have said in the past, like, no, you probably heard his songs. And I'm like, I probably have, but I have no idea that they're Ed, Ed Sheeran, Sheeran yeah. songs. Um, yeah, there you, you've you've heard them because they've been in commercials and TV shows and movies and stuff. So I know you've heard them, probably heard them on the radio or whatever, but or in passing, um, you just would never know. Like you're not gonna be like, oh yeah, Ed Sheeran, you know. I mean, I don't even do that most of the time. Paige will be like, hey, it's Ed Sheeran. I'm like, oh, that's him, I guess. All right. Cool. But you know. Uh. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I thought I had some things to talk about, but apparently I don't. I have a couple things here. Let's do this. That I'm slowly trying to remember because I literally read them a week ago. Mm -hmm. uh, according to Inverse, uh, Stephen King's unfilmable epic is still coming to TV. Uh, but apparently there is a huge catch. The uh, unfilmable epic that they're talking about is actually the uh, Stephen King's Dark Tower series. Um, I believe it's Mike Flanagan that is uh, is trying to helm this. Yes, sir. Uh, excuse me as I scroll through some of this a little bit more because I cannot remember for the life of me what it was talking about. Uh, so apparently he's pleased with how the series is in development so far, uh, quoted as saying, we have a wonderful spring, we had a wonderful spring with it, and we're making enormous progress on it, uh, and have every reason to believe that on the other side of the strike, it's going to be priority number one. Uh, it says that we carved out a Netflix deal knowing we, we were leaving, or we carved it out from the Netflix deal. Uh, for people that don't know, Mike Flanagan is one of the producers, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, behind things like uh, that vampire show, Midnight something or other, Midnight Mass, right? That was Mike Flanagan, yeah. <laughs> he, uh, dude, he wrote, it, he wrote, directed it, and produced it. Yeah, I, I knew he had something to do with it. Jesus Christ, <laughs> Joe. Haunting of Hill House and that other uh, ghost one. Um, Bly Manor. Bly Manor. Yep. As well as it's coming back to Midnight Japan. Society. Midnight Society. Or Midnight Club. Min no, Midnight Society. The one uh, about, about the kids? Aggregated in the Midnight Club or adapting Haunting of Hill House. Midnight Society. Okay. Whichever one. You might be right. Uh, yeah, whichever one. Uh, so that's his, is uh, where he's from and what he's basically saying because all those came out on Netflix. He had a deal with Netflix to produce all those things where I guess right write and produce and direct and you know be all fancy with that stuff uh but this in particular as he stated was uh, him carving it out meaning that uh he didn't want it to necessarily be tied to netflix once his deal with was netflix was up he was going to you know apparently shop this around to other places and see uh who would uh, who would bite on taking it uh, i know the amazon had the wizard in glass that they were working on, and I have not heard anything about that. God, what feels like a year, so I don't even know if they're still uh, in production on that. But that is a separate thing from this, and uh, he, I believe he did even make mention about Amazon somewhere in here. 
Uh, yeah, we carved it out for a Netflix deal knowing we were leaving, and we carved it out from our Amazon deal as well, knowing that they'd already tried to do a Dark Tower adaptation, talking about the, the Wizard of Glass, and may, may be reluctant to do it. Uh, so the Dark Tower doesn't have a studio. We don't have a partner on it yet, so I'm developing it myself, which is a real blast. He's quoted this saying. So, uh, yeah, that's basically a little bit of an update on what's going on with that. Um, yeah, so I, re I didn't read that article. I mean, I've read a couple things from Mike Flanagan about it, um, and obviously they can't do a lot of talking about stuff because of the strike and all that fun stuff. So, um, he can't officially say he's been working on anything. Um, but, uh, yeah, so originally it was reported, and we even talked about it on the show that his, his deal with that's coming up with Amazon here, um, soon, uh, originally everyone thought that's where it was going to go. Um, because obviously he set a deal with them and they already had stuff going on. But I guess to that point, his, his, he's talking about that. He's like, he's, probably looking at other things to do with it because of obviously Amazon um, apparently had a failed uh, adaptation which is we we talked about this before too it's weird that they wanted to start with Wizard and Glass uh, I, we both know you and I we both know that's technically a prequel yeah, story it starts out in the present story but it does take place in, in the prequel yeah because it, it has the it has that uh, basically um it has him telling the story of him being younger. Uh, his, ex I, I want to say it was his. F wasn't he? He told that story because it was his first experience with the Man in Black, right? I believe so. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and then it's uh, which is, I mean, obviously not a weird place to start, but it's a weird place to start if you tell the story the right way because you start with your main cast talking about a fire. Um, outside, I think at that point, aren't they outside the uh, Emerald City? Yeah, they're on the way to the Emerald City. They they stop for uh, for a camp, and then yeah, they they finally talk Roland into talk, telling him more about his history. Yeah. Um, and then so he, you know, obviously they, they go back in, in time uh, to tell this his story of him, him being a young gunslinger and all the things that he kind of did, which were borderline terrible. Um, but for goodish reasons, um, but all that fun stuff, and then it would just be a weird way to throw you into a world that you have no context around, because there's things in like to me, there's things in that story that lend to a character we've already learned about for like four books, mm -hmm. and we've you know we've come to like love, but also like wonder like why is he so broken. Um, and this obviously tells you a lot of it, you know, uh, being that he, he falls in love and all that fun stuff. But it's like none of that has context. So it's just a guy you've never met before sitting around a campfire telling a story of his past that has no context in what you're experiencing. If you were to do it the way the book is, you know what I mean? No, I, I, I get what you mean. I just think uh, I, I'm thinking of it, of it two ways and maybe how what my – I guess emotional response would be to to if they literally just took out the Wizard of Glass and and told that story page for page it actually to me would be kind of cool because you have this story that's already that's already going on you have these characters that that kind of are best friends or good friends but they don't still know really a whole lot about each other so I'm just envisioning in like the first episode, you don't even have to do a lore dump or anything like that. You're just you're just telling the story as is. So you kind of leave the audience as like you know what's going on. You know what what is this? Some of them may not even care about it, but the vast majority of what your story is going to be is about Roland's past. And so you're telling people about Roland and who he is and and whatnot. Uh, and then you could end the series and. It, Unfortunately, it's gonna. It, that's gonna be one of those things. Like this is gonna have to be like a limited series. It's not gonna be something that's gonna go on for like five or six seasons or something like that. This is maybe two seasons at most. Uh, so like twenty something episodes, I would say. But you tell that whole story of his past, and then you end it with, and this is why we're doing this today. 
and it and the the series ends with them back on the road to the Emerald City, and and that's where I, I sit there and think on the one hand that that would be really kind of an interesting take on the series, because you let you leave the the audience wondering what what next, what happens next, uh, but you could also then go back and actually do the rest of the series if you wanted to but if you do that you'd have to maintain the cast you can't just go and make something a a different cast and and whatnot yeah so i think it would have been really cool if they would have done something like that Uh, i don't think they would have the balls to do something like that and then just kind of like you know dot 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 you know kind of I, I think of it in, in the sense of like Quantum Leap, you know, and Sam never returned home and continued jumping, uh, you know, from place to place, just dot, dot, dot. You know, you just leave the story at that. There are more adventures and stories to be told, but we're done here. Yeah. Kind of thing. I think it's it, it'd be a cool idea. Uh, obviously, it, from what this sounds like, it's not going anywhere. And so I don't think they're actually doing the Wizarding Glass anymore. I don't think, like I said, I don't I've ever heard of an official cancellation of it. But I also don't think we ever heard of official start of it either. I think I know they were developing it, right? But they develop stuff all the time that never sees the light of day. And the only reason we know about this is because it's a huge property that yeah. everybody wants something to be done with. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, um, but I did. It's also weird at the same time to have uh, Amazon say, you know, we are going to develop a Wizard Wizarding Glass, so we got the rights to do Wizarding Glass, but then. Mike Flanagan got the rights to do the rest of the series. That's um, weird to me. Yeah, it does it within the King's universe. It's one thing that it's one thing I've, I've lamented before about Stephen King's properties, and it's cool that he's just like, and I don't know if he still does it actually. That whether whether he still does it or not, where he will be like, you know, I have this book. Do you want to turn it into a movie? Just pay me a dollar, and you can go for it, turn it into a movie. Yeah, it's cool that he's like that, but. As, I, as I've said before, I kind of, since a lot of these stories are so intertwined with each other, man, it would have been really cool to just have a Stephen King universe. Yeah. Where somebody just goes through and makes these stories and is able to make those links to those stories. Not so much as Easter eggs, but as, yeah, they are one giant connected story. Yeah. I was thinking maybe the reason they had it is because they did dark the Dark Tower movie, but they didn't. Sony did. Yeah. So. But again, uh, then again, it's it's a technically it's an individual book, so. So we could have gotten the rights to the individual book, and which they is, could have gotten rights to the. Yeah. To maybe the movie property of it. I don't know. Very if Flanagan bizarre. has the TV rights to it or something like that. I honestly don't know how right holders are these days. Yeah, it's, it well it depends on. So with that, you'd have to like, you'd have to get the rights to all of them. Mm-hmm. Which I mean, obviously, if you're gonna do it right, you have to. You can't just be like, right. well, let's start with the first one and see what happens, because then someone else is gonna go, gobble, come to me for this and give me the monies. But that's what like I, that's what I mean because like uh, something like that comes comes to mind is the expanse where where sci-fi had the the tv rights to it but they didn't have the streaming rights to it to it and so uh yeah sci-fi didn't make the money off the streaming and that's why they stopped production on it and, and this and that so yeah so i mean like all these you know rights management is, is a very weird and uh, complex thing always has been always will be always will be uh, I do want someone to do a um, a super fucked up animated version of Charlie the Choo Choo, though. That would be, right? Um, I mean, I realize that you'd probably need to do it within the context of a Dark Tower series as like a, hey, here's this one-off, like, one-shot episode and just do, like, this fucked up animation. Like, I'm talking, like, dark, not, like, bright. I mean, part of it would be bright, but, like, just, like, this weird super surreal animation. I don't even know what to like point you out to think of, like but just like super like gross looking. Almost Thomas the Train Engine type like animation, you know what I mean? Like like, like that f- tangible, it's like a real thing, but like not a real thing. 
Yeah. Um, even stop motion would be so, super fucked up too. Um, I think you're. I think you're correct in doing in in mentioning like Tom the Tank Engine, something like that. But you have this like weird eeriness about it throughout yeah. the whole entire thing. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, if you look the, I mean, it's it's around here somewhere. Yeah, it's in it's in the other room. I know exactly Jesus where mine is. Oh, it's fucking library. Yeah. mine is. Oh fucking! It's a weird size, so I know it's somewhere weird. But like, if you look at the book that came out, which was hilarious, they made it look like a child's uh, a right. storybook. Uh, just so great, um, because that's what it is in the in the in the story in the in the thing is a it's an actual book. Um, but it's uh in that you have these, like he it, at no point in that in the in the in the drawing the illustrations in that book does does Charlie look okay? He always looks a little creepy. Then obviously by the end he has that disturbing like demonish like smile face on and it's just and then of course the conductor is also I can't remember his name but uh or if he if he has a name he has a name I don't right remember if he has a name either maybe they call him conductor I don't know um but yeah something like that like just to be like super fucked and 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 gnarly um but like and oh because I was thinking when we, were, we were talking when while you we were talking I was like odd, oddly enough. I don't know why, but I think it would be so much better if they did the Dark Tower series animated. They're... I think it, it 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 could be because it lends to being able to do a lot of the stuff in the sh- in the show or in the book, I should say, uh, a lot easier rather than having to spend a big budget on doing lots of CG work and whatnot. Yeah, and like um I know like the uh there's the comic book. I'm trying to find out who who originally did that one. It's Jay Lee, right? Dark. Yeah. Uh the Dark Tower um yeah, books. Well, I was going to say I think Dark Dark Horse is the one that, that published the Dark Tower series, I think. Marvel. Um Marvel? Oh, yeah. Marvel did. Okay. Yeah. Um I think they did all of them. I think so. Yeah. I know I have those somewhere in the house somewhere. Yeah, um, but like Jay Lee's art really lends itself to that because of the gothic mm-hmm. kind of style he does. Um, but it just comes out like those things. Like, remember, so going towards not to deep dive into Dark Tower, but we're going to because I'm already there. Um, the one scene that like always pops in my brain of like how would you visually do this in any media, and I'd have to go back and look at the comic books and see if they actually did it, if I remember correctly if they did it um so remember the end of uh the wolves of kala you find out there's uh a path a secret path that goes underneath the the mountain that leads yeah. to where the dark tower is um yes. and when they when they go and they tell you hey like just go forward don't listen don't look don't just don't touch the walls just go through because yes. they describe it as to me it was always I mean, obviously, he doesn't specifically say it in the books, but it, the way he describes it makes me in my brain, my brain movie, uh, saw it as this, like, chiseled through rock pathway, but the walls are this like pulsating thing of like the creatures trying to get through, and like it was basically to me, it was always. And I think someone said this once before. Um, it was like basically that is the mist on the outside of those walls, and the creatures that from the mist, from the movie The Mist and the book The Mist, yeah, yeah. Uh, are what's on on the other side of those walls, and they're just trying to get through. So in my my brain movie, as I read the books, that's how I pictured the walls. Like they're basically like they're like Freddy Krueger trying to press through the wall type thing. So you'd see their faces and you see their hands and their bodies just writhing against the walls as you're going down this 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 tunnel um, with your very with your little light and I just imagine it and again the reason why it'd be animated better because you could control your 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 darks and your lights but the only light you have is the light source that the the travelers are carrying and so you'd see just these pockets and you could, you could separate them so they wouldn't be bunched up so they don't accidentally touch the wall. Because they they mentioned, I think in the book they mentioned if you like, you don't want to break the like touch the wall because it could break that 
that seal or whatever and like let them in uh, or out, I guess, really, depending on how you're looking at it. Uh, but so you could have them kind of spaced out down the hallway and then each little bubble of light shows like a different writhing section of the wall or whatever. But it would be all around them. It would be like, the, not except for the floor, uh, the ground would probably be like a path where you could make build a path so you could touch it without right. doing anything. But it would be like, the, like almost like a bridge suspended over this 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 tunnel, you know what I mean? So like all around him in this bubble of light would just be these writhing creatures trying to like reach for him and like you'd hear these noises, but you'd only hear the noises as the light passes through because otherwise the creatures wouldn't really know they're there. Right. Uh, but that's just, an, again, brain movie type thing when you're imagining as you're reading things what it would look like. And I'd have to, like I said, I'd have to go back and look and see if they even delve into it in the comic books um, that far, which would be also be a nightmare to find in this fucking place. Right. Um, but yeah, that's I don't know, the little things like that, but it's, it always, I always go back and I thought this, and I think I've mentioned it before on here. The many times we've talked about Stephen King stuff is the complexity and the world that was built in the dark tower books. Um, just lends itself to an animation animated movie more than anything else because of, of how the fantastical is, is, represented like on the page uh especially like so you go back to the gunslinger uh or no the, the, the gunslinger um why am i spacing on the second book was that the drawing of the three or was that yeah the drawing of the three when he wakes up on the beach and he just has the doors mm -hmm. and the doors are, are are nothing there's there's just a door and a door frame there's nothing behind it. there's nothing around it. it's just sitting there on this beach um in my brain, it's just like, how would you do that without making it look really stupid and, and C with CG and stuff? You know what I mean? Obviously, like green skin the shit out of it, but then you have like, then the monstrous of those like crab creatures. Just and I always imagine, like, and I think in the comic book they actually do a really good job of them because they're like this, they're almost deformed lobster crab creatures with like rock bodies. Yeah. Um, so like, there's little things like that that's like you could do so much more with animation. Uh, be it you know uh, computer generated or ha hand drawn. Uh, I say that because nothing's like hand drawn anymore. It's all done on the computer, but either done on like a you know uh, Intuit tablet or, or or one of those things. Um, Intuos. I said Intuit. That's fucking tax software. Um, like something like that. You know. You know. Uh, but like it just seems like you could do much more. But you could also even um, do a different. Not, I want to say anime style, animation style, but like a different aesthetic for every like because every book has this different thing. But when you go to like say the big city, when you go to like see Jake or something, right? You'd see him in the city, which obviously would need to look more realistic city wise than it would like what the 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 different planes and stuff you have like you know uh, mid world and all that fun stuff like that. And each biome that they go through is like a different world they're in. And you could make it, you could artistically do that. The characters would look the same, but the world they're in would look drastically different when you go to it. So you can go, I, I just picture because the the image that pops in my head. If you if you Google Marvel's The Dark Tower, The Dark Tower, you'll see Jay Lee's depiction of it. I think there's a cover of it, and it looks gnarly as fuck because you can see the different levels, and they're not even. It's not like a perfect tower, but you can just see like all these different like juxtaposing like different images around and then the, the field of flowers you know what I mean and it's like super gnarly and stuff like that but that's just me I guess maybe it could be other people too but no I think it would lend to itself to do that like I've like I said earlier um, doing animation would probably be a lot cheaper than doing CG work uh, and you could probably stylize it a lot. You well, probably you could definitely stylize it a lot better uh, than you can uh, necessarily with uh, with live action uh, stuff. Yeah, because like the Gunslinger, the first book, the Gunslinger is essentially just a, it's a western, mm -hmm. and really you have no the only real non western ish areas you have would be <clears throat> excuse me. The castle stuff when he's telling this, like he's narrating the the past and stuff like that. Um, 
I mean, he finds Jake at the gas station, right? So like that's more modern, but I mean, but you don't have it doesn't have to be like an Arco. It could be just you know remnants of an old. Like you think of like uh, um, what is that? Uh, uh, Walker Texas Ranger. You know, yeah. you see those old like side of the road gas stations with like the old fucking like hand crank pump and whatever. Just yeah. could be like that. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Um, it just has. It does have to be a little, like it does have to stand out. You know what I mean? It has to be like this doesn't look like it should be here because that's always. And I could be wrong. Maybe that's just me again. My my movie brain going like, hey, this is what it would look like if it was like in real, because that's how I process books. Um, and because I think I started reading comic books before I started reading book books, um, so visuals is always a thing. But I think that like. When you when I when I visualize it, I always see like this barren wasteland, and then like a, a pseudo modern gas station, rundown obviously gas station, um, and just doesn't really fit in. But it to the characters that are involved, other than Jake, who's obviously just thrown into the deep end, uh, because the last thing he remembers is being pushed in front of a bus uh, or car or truck or can't remember what it was. Um, spoiler alert, I guess. Spoiler alert? Right, maybe. Nah, it's an um, introduction to the character in the first book. So yeah, it's fine. And the book came out like 20 years ago, so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you. More, more than that, actually. Yeah, I know. I just I just said like 20 because the 20 issues. Years ago. Yeah. Um, it's still 20 years ago, Joe. This is more than 20 years. Yeah. Uh, but like you look, I, I was looking at it like the care, like, like, um, Roland and everybody around that just don't they just. They just see the gas station that we see on that on that road, right? It doesn't look odd to them that a gas station is in this western town that shouldn't have a gas station. To Jake, it's like, why the fuck is there a gas station here in the middle of this westernish town, or whatever, right? But then when you get to like the what's the town he goes to before the uh, the one with the the crazy lady in the church, um, which is really disturbing. Which is Remember it's the one where he's there and he like uh, he, he's kind of on his way and he's uh, they well, yeah, that, I, that was part of I thought there was only one town in that in that book because oh, yeah. the he starts with chasing the man in black through through the desert yeah and ends up in the town yeah and then it's you find out she's a disciple of the man in black um, yeah and and there's she's... a whole like weirdness there and a bit of a story and then he leaves the town. And ends up wandering across the the gas station. Yeah, because that's it's, where he finds Jake. Yeah, yeah. And then Jake has visions and and stuff of the man in black and where he's going. And then they end up uh, at the mountain in the distance. Yeah, because it, it's the cat. It's the, uh, the mountains. He takes a shortcut through the mine. The mine, and Jake ends up dying again in the mine. And then he has a powwow with the uh, the man in black at the end, and that's where the book ends. Yeah, and then you pick up, and he's... Sit down with him. Yeah, and he wakes up. In the next book, he wakes up. He's not there. The fire's out. And he's like, shit, yeah. what have I done? Yeah. Um, yeah, I remember, like, the... I'm mean, obviously the, the, the... It's been a, a little while since I've uh, read them. Um, but uh, it just... I remember, like, that town <laughs> going, going through, like, the whole thing is just super fucked up. Um, what do they call her? Not, not the mother. It's been such a long time have, since yeah. I read that book. I'd have to look it up and see. Um, but yeah, I just remember that that being really fucked up because like the whole like she's giving birth to things and stuff and like he uses a gun at one point to to give her the uh, I don't even want to say it because it's just disgusting. The, the abortion. And it's yeah, like, abortion wow, by lead. Stephen King. Yeah, Stephen don't give a fuck. He, yeah, like, I always find it weird that, uh, and I know this is a, probably a whole debate thing that could be debated left and right. He's obviously called, like, the master of horror. Yeah. But to me, his stuff isn't really classically horror, like ghosts and jump scares and stuff like that. It's not even psychological horror to me. Like, I don't know. It's weird. It's... I just don't consider his stuff necessarily horror. I would, but I, but I get probably why people do consider it horror. There was an interview 
where someone asked him something and they said, and I think he quoted it at one point, like on Twitter or something. The guy basically said that, um, hit, like he always looked at Stephen King's horror air quotes as the horrors of humanity more than like of specters and ghosts. Cause obviously he has some of those, you know what I mean? Like there's, if you look at like, uh, it for example, right. But, when you look at Pennywise or uh, whatever you want to call it, um, you you look at it. Yes, he's a monster and other things, but it's the stuff that happens in dairy outside of what he does. Like he's obviously eating people and stuff like that, which is terrifying, mostly kids. But it's the it's the it's that that state of like fear that's in the town. Like there's the 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 all the stuff that happens to the kids when they were younger. Um, yeah. with the bullies and, 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 and all the fun stuff and things like that. That's the stuff that's like really scary. Like that's the, like the, the psychological, like humanity, tearing, ter- terrible things. Um, cause even if you jump to like when they're adults, like Beverly's husband's abusing her, um, you know, the different things like that. Um, that's where the, to me always where the horror comes from. And then there's the supernatural stuff. Like if you look at like Carrie, for example, right. Like, she has those telekinesis powers, right? But, like, the horror part of that is not what she does to people. She does kill people in terrible ways, you know, throwing them into a gas station that explodes and putting a fucking electrical bulldog on somebody, all stuff like that. But it's all the shit that her mom did to her is, like, really fucked up, and that's, like, the scary, scary part. And you got to realize, like, that's just, like, that's just a normal human. Well, not normal. That's a human. I don't want to say normal. (laughs) fucked up yeah. that's normal that's a human being with no no abilities or powers or, or spooky stuff just being a fucking crazy person and doing this to their own daughter that kind of shit's scary but like when you go like when you go to like it like oh, that's terrifying because like he's he's embodying their fear right and he's like eating kids or whatever um he's really just eating their f- their their fears and, and and stuff like that but um, it also has to sustain the physical form, so he eats fucking flesh too. Um, but like, it's the other stuff, like the stuff that Henry Bowers and stuff does with his cohorts, um, that is really, really scary to me. That's how I always looked at it, and that's and then do what the guy in the interview said. This was a while ago, because if you go and look at a lot of the stuff through even some of his like newer stuff, um, like uh, the Outsider. Right. So that's a monster, right. That does things, but it's the, it's the fear that, that again, fear the, the terrible stuff that the, the other humans in the town do to each other when they suspect that someone's a bad person or whatever. Right. Um, there's like the Institute, which I don't, I know you've never read. Um, but it's, no, I never read the Institute, but yeah, it's, it's a link. It's a, in a way linked to the shining, um, because of the kids have ability to do different things. Um, it's a link more towards Firestarter. Uh, in the Shining Institute also. In the Shining also, yeah. but the Institute uh, is more prominent in, in, in the Firestarter. Yeah. They're the ones that are chasing after the, yep. the girl with the, the firepowers. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So they, they are, you know, that's the thing. Um, uh, but like, um, so like that's like the, there's, yeah, they have p- powers and they do crazy shit, right? But it's like the people who are doing this to these kids, they don't have powers. They're just, you know, they're adults and they have money and they're just terrible human beings. Uh, that shit's terrifying. Um, also terrifying because they're using them as weapons and like they cyclically kill people from like, you know, hundreds and thousands of miles away. Uh, spoiler alert. That's what happens in the book. Um, but that's not the whole story. That's just like the, but if you've, if you know Firestarter, then you know that that's what they're doing anyways. Yeah. What the Institute's doing. Yeah. Um, so that's cool. And then like, um, revival, uh, that is another uh, examination of, of human beings being terrible to each other. So that's that's always how I looked at like the horror half of it. It's not like he's not writing ghost stories every time. He has those. He does. But he has other stuff like, uh, and a lot of it is psychological. Um, it's just kind of creepy and eerie and unsettling. Um, like even Fairy Tale, which I know you probably haven't read that one either. It's one of his. That's his one is. His newest novel, that's not Holly, which comes out on the fifth of September. That's his last one that came out earlier this year. Um, and that one, 
really it starts off you're very confused because uh, if you read the premise of the book, which does not lead you to much of anything, um, the first part of the book is nothing to do with anything fantastical. It just happens to do with people. Um, and it's very suspenseful. And it, it was funny. not funny. It, it's weird because it reminded me a lot of App Pupil. Okay. But, like, without, like, this fucking whole hidden Nazi killer thingy. Um, but, like, just like, the old guy and the younger person, like, kind of, like, you know, meeting up or whatever. Um, so, like, that kind of thing. But um, then it goes on to the fantastical and is great beyond that part. And then when you get into, like, the last quarter of the book, you forget where the book started. And you're like, oh, holy shit, that's right. It was a house on a hill. We're still, oh, okay, yeah, okay, all right. Yeah, so. All right. I guess I've just never thought of it that way. Like I said, to me, horror tends to be more of the... the the spooky scary stuff and I, I do recognize the psychological types of horror but I just guess I never really thought of it in those in that context but uh, yeah okay yeah I get now yeah I mean it's just that's uh, that's how I looked at it and then when I saw the interview or that 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 quote or whatever I was like yeah that's what I'm talking about because like there's a lot of really terrible people in those books and like and he's one of those, like, he's one of the best at it, I think. And I'd say this because I'm probably, probably biased because he's one of my favorite writers. But he has this way of making um, certain characters make you feel a way where, like, you hate them. Mm-hmm. And you're like, man, I really want this person to die of a horrible death. Which is terrible to think of anybody that like, you want that to happen. But, like... They're child abusers or, like, you know, whatever, right? And it's like, oh. And then they get their comeuppance sometimes, not always. And you're like, yeah, you know what? That should have been worse. Yeah. Uh, but then you got to realize, like, you literally just thought of all that stuff for something that was just words on a page. Mm-hmm. You're not watching a news story. You're not hearing about a fucking lady who chopped up her kids and fucking tried to shove them down the fucking, you know, t- toilet or whatever. Uh you may have in the book, but like that's just words on a page. Like the human being wrote this, put it on a page, and when you read it, you felt all those emotions. Right. You know what I mean? But then that has nothing to do with like the girl who has psychic powers that can like rip you from a- apart with her minds, mm-hmm. or light you on fire with her minds. And you're like, oh, huh, well, that's a whole different thing. Right. So, but yeah, psychological horror is definitely what I would say he is more than anything else. But maybe that's just me. Yeah, sounds perfectly yeah. correct. Um, I did find when you were talking. Uh, I had this other one. God damn it, Cody, you went away from it. Sorry. Um. So we talked about this once before on the podcast, the life of Chuck. Um, here it is. So, their article, uh, is why Stephen King almost denied movie rights for Mike Flanagan's fourth adaptation. And uh, how he was convinced. So, uh, this comes from, this is from Screen Rant, but I think they stole most of this from something else. Um, But, so the the fourth adaptation they're talking about for Mike Flanagan is The Life of Chuck. Okay. Um, So, uh, so it says, Mike Flanagan convinced Stephen King to grant him the movie rights to The Life of Chuck, despite initial hesitation. King was initially uh, for, uh, focused on Flanagan's work on the Dark Tower series, but eventually allowed him to adapt uh, both stories simultaneously. Okay. Because the life of Chuck is the thing he's working on currently, or was working on currently. Um, Flanagan expressed his belief that the life of Chuck could be the best movie he ever makes, which convinced yeah. Stephen King to uh, give him the opportunity. It's a pretty bold statement. That's bold. Um, yeah, let's see how it plays out. Um, so, and it all comes down to the fact that, like, he, 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 he sat down with, um, with him and he basically broke down, like, his vision for it and, like, kind of basically led with his passion for it and, like, how to tell the story right. Um, and it basically led to Steven be like, all right, cool. Yeah. You know, I already gave you this, uh, stuff for the Dark Tower so, yeah, I'll give you this as well, um, and just put it in, in, in total faith in, in him and said, "Hey, you know, I, I believe that your vision 
could could possibly make this uh, the best it could be, you know. Um, and that's what Steven's always looking for is looking for someone to take his uh, his original st- uh, idea and IP or whatever and develop it in a way where it's not killing it off, right? But it's also not like just trying to adapt it word for word, but like making something more tangible out of it. You know, does it, you know what I mean by that? Um, and it just doesn't, seems like that. I'm not gonna read the whole quote cause there's a big old fucking thing about it, but it just seems like this, that he's looked at, he's looking at this in a way of like a true homage to the story and a way to tell it where it's visually appealing, but doesn't take away from the story. Because a lot of times they, they just too worry about too much of one part of the art and not so much the other. Um, and then sometimes they try to do that and then it fails. The Dark Tower movie. Um, because they try to do something so off with it. Um, but also like trying to like incorporate so much stuff and like they just don't know how to do things. You know, things like that. Um, but oddly enough, um, Tom Hiddleston and Mark Hamill uh, have been announced to be in this. So that's pretty dope, if you ask me. Extremely. Yeah. So, but I, you, when you were talking about that, that reminded me of the life of Chuck because that's the next uh, big thing he has coming out. Because the Dark Tower is definitely not going to be something you just jump to. You know what I mean? Oh, right. It's like, oh no, that's not a, that's not a just. Hey, let's jump into it. It's uh, a small just, property, you know, you probably yeah. never heard of. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for the the common folk out there. That's the other thing, too, is you kind of want to, like, I know, like, Mike Flanagan ain't got a lot, like, he's definitely has to kind of coordinate how much of his time he's going to give up to doing the Dark Tower. But when you start the Dark Tower, you kind of have to go into knowing, like, you're going to start with the Gunslinger, right? Mm-hmm. And you're going to need to go, or at least plan to go all the way. And so to me, it's like, obviously, I think he even talked about it in one of the articles. He wants to do a mix of movies and TV shows with it. Um, versus just doing all TV, which really you could you could do, but it's going to be like the movies need to be like partial, not like full books, because those books are so dense with shit. Like right. you know, um, but anyways, so you really need to like be able to make the plan for all of it. Yeah, you probably have to do a, a super deep dive in like full on scripts for like the first part, but you need to have a, a very very detailed roadmap leading all the way to the end. Right. Because if without that, I think you're going to falter, but also like you need like, to me that needs to be like, that's all you're doing that entire time. Right. You have a clear idea of what you're doing and how you're going to get there and where you're going instead of trying to meander your way through things. Yeah. Let's start here. And if it does well, we'll go into the other ones. No, you need like right. full on lean into idea. all of it before and then like yes if it works out you can continue on but you need to have that atlas of like you know everything that's going to be happening from start to end and so you're not just like okay let's how are we going to do this now it's like you need to have that big plan all the way like those different stops along the road uh, need to be done Um, and you don't need to stop and do other things you need to continue on that road uh, through the whole thing you don't be like okay we did the first one let's go do something completely different and then we will then go and do this. It's like, nah, you need to, you need to be on that road all the way through and never and never lean off until the end. Right. Mainly because you have your cast. It needs to be the same all the time. And I mean, there will be times where they can do other projects, right? Because they're going to be downtime. Uh, also, that what leads to animation being a real boon is you can do all the animation or you can do all the voice acting stuff and do animation and not have to worry about having the cast there for, you know, multiple years uh, and not being able to do other projects. Cause they can record nowadays. They can record fucking shit anywhere. Yeah. But you know, that's just me, me thinking out loud, I guess. It is just you. But yeah. Uh, anything else, Joe, what do, what do you got? What else you got? There were a couple of other things. Uh, apparently, we might be getting an A or a cut, A, a or an A or a cut to Suicide Squad. Uh, this coming from Fortress of Solitude. 
uh, yeah, I, this was another one that I read a while ago, and now I'm trying to remember what it was because I think it it was a David Ayer, obviously the director. I don't remember if he helped write or or anything of Suicide Squad. Uh, the, uh, the 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 original one, not the one with uh, the one with Will Smith, not the one with uh, Idris Elba. Yeah. Uh, has won it after Zack Snyder did his director's cut of Justice League. Uh, has wanted to do his own cut of of uh, Suicide Squad, and it looks like we might be getting it. There was no, if I recall right, there was no like. Uh, it's going to be, it, we are actively working on it and, and we're going to have it done by such and such time. Uh, but uh, I believe it says in here that he has the support of James. The unsexed board of, uh, of the CEO of DC Studios has undoubtedly raised his hopes that the error cut might finally see the light of day. But one question remains when will the director's cut of Suicide finally be released? If Eris' words are anything to go by, fans can expect to see his original cut of the infamous 2016 film before the new DCU chapter starts. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I saw the thing uh, he tweeted about it. Um, I just don't know. I mean, well, with the writers, uh, well, the strike going on, writers, directors, actors, all that fun stuff. Um, I don't know. I don't even know if we're gonna get the DC stuff uh, on time right now. Mm-hmm. No, um, I so I mean, we could see the David Ayer cut beforehand, uh, because they would probably need something. But obviously, it's not gonna hit the theater. It's gonna definitely go to no, streaming. Yeah, max. Um, but yeah, he's been talking about it quite a bit, and like he's uh, weirdly enough, like. He's very active on, I was going to say Twitter, on X, whatever the yeah. fuck you want to call it. Jesus You're Christ. Right. X. Um, and he, like, he kind of, like, it's bold, because I don't, I mean, I, I'd have to look up and see what David Ayer is actually doing uh, recently, because I can't even remember the last thing I remember him doing. Um, but, like, and I could, I just put my phone down when looking at David Ayer stuff. Uh, but, like, he's on, when he's on X, <laughs> I just want to say Twitter. He's on X. He's literally always only talking about Suicide Squad. It's it's kind of weird because like he doesn't like. What else is he doing? I mean, he's got to be doing other stuff. Well, right now he's not because the strike. But like, well, fair. I can't think of it. Looking back at it, I'd probably have to look at his tweets or, or his X's or whatever. What the fuck are they even called now? Um, his posts and. His posts. There you go. And and like look to see if he's like I don't remember seeing him talking about anything else other than like answering questions from people about Suicide Squad. And like he he and he's he doesn't shy away from a lot of things. Like there's probably a bunch. He probably gets a lot of like messages that like people don't like. They just direct right at him, you know, by putting his name first and not a period or, or whatever. Um, and also I don't follow everyone on X. So I don't see everyone's tweet or everyone's X's or posts or whatever you want to call them. Uh, but he will respond, and he is pretty much always front facing with it. He's never trying to sidestep stuff. Like there was one that was from this morning or last night or something, where someone was like, they're just bashing it, like online. He's like, oh, blah blah blah. And then one of the guys said, like the like one of the people posted on there was one of the replies, not from his, but it was like just this thread that was going down, and. The dude's like, yeah, we finally got the Snyder cut, you know, that no one really believed was the thing. We finally got it, and it was just as disappointing. And I was like, well, first off, what? I thought it was good. I was like, uh, well, you're an internet troll, obviously, because, like, you're incorrect about that statement. Like, yeah. fully. But then David comes on, and he replies to the original part of it. Not that dude's. He's not going to fucking pander those people. But, like, the real thing was, like, someone had asked him, is, hey, or not, like, directly, but, hey, you know, like, whatever, you know, I'd like to hear, was the damaged tattoo, was that your idea? Or was that something, like, later popped up? And he was like, no, I will t- tell you right away, like, it was always an idea. Originally, we thought blessed was going to be the tattoo, and then it was damaged, and he's like, and I'll be honest with you, it just wasn't a good idea. It didn't it didn't work out the way we originally thought it was going to. 
He's like, I, I don't have any, like, this is what our plan was. There's no excuse. Yeah. It's just it, some things just don't work out. And I was like, that's actually fucking cool of you to do. Yeah. You're because you don't. your fault. Yeah. Like, we all know it's definitely down to you. Like, you, nothing's going to be. Like, I'm pretty sure the, the studio didn't force you to put a damage tattoo on his forehead. Yeah. You know, that's definitely an aesthetic you were going for. And Either it's way, just, ultimately, you, know, you let it go. Like, yeah. Even if Jared Leto came up to you one day, look, I put damage on my forehead you as a director could literally be like fuck that that fucking thing off your forehead yeah you know it's so. dumb but ultimately whoever came up with it you know yeah he, he accepts that he still let it let it through even yeah if he, he wasn't the one that came up came up with it but yeah it'd be interesting to see the, an air cut uh i i i lament that maybe we should probably let this stuff go uh, at this point because it really isn't helping anything on the one hand we are kind of like i did enjoy the uh the the, the snyder cut of justice league but ultimately we're not getting any more of it you know uh so same thing with here it would be cool i guess to see a an error cut of uh of suicide squad but they already moved on with a different suicide squad yeah so why you know really see why why get this i don't know yeah it's like you have it but like they're it's not like they're gonna dump another hundred million dollars into it no it's you gonna know? be a recut and they're gonna just dump some extra money into yeah it i mean it's it done. but it's like it's like i don't know it's in on one hand like to your point like at one point like one hand i do want to i do want to see what it was what, what it would have been like like what was gonna happen but it's also like to your other point is like do we does it matter anymore not, no, it doesn't because James Gunn is at the helm and he's doing something totally different. Like, like he he or like James already redid well, well sort of as a sequelish reboot thingy, whatever you want to call it, right? With the Suicide Squad from twenty twenty one, which by the way is weird to say that that was so far lo- so long ago. Mm-hmm. Like I say, so long ago it was like two years, right? Whatever, like that just seems like it was fairly recent. Yeah. For some reason, but it's like also. That's not really moving forward. I mean, it is in a way because like Peacekeeper uh, or Peacemaker is is Peacekeeper. That's weird. Peacemaker is moving forward and doing its own thing, but like that's not really like that's still like in the out outlier. It's like it's still the DCEU um, mm-hmm. stuff. It's the extended universe or or, or as some would would call it the Elseworlds uh, stuff. So like whatever, right? And obviously that's where the air cut would have to live. But it's like, do we, like, so my only question is, if there's still life and potential happening of this, does that mean he's been working on it since then? And he's been working on it all the time? Because I just looked it up. He did the tax collector in 2020. Mm -hmm. He has a new one called the bookkeeper, which is scheduled to come out later next year or sometime next year. Um, So it's like, obviously, he's doing other things, but it's like, is he is he currently working on that? Maybe not currently because of the strikes, but you know, what I mean, he's probably working on it. Um, and it's just, I don't know, it's it's weird, but it's like also like I don't think that they're gonna dump the resources like they did for Zach's. Yeah, mainly because I think Zach's there was so much more of it. You know what I mean? There was it's so also much different characters that people care about. People care about Batman, Superman, Wonder yeah. Woman. Flash, all those characters, and these are seriously your C tier characters in the Suicide Squad that most people don't really care about. Yeah, and I mean, like, I think we even said this when it originally when, the, when it first came out. We we're like, I don't know why they're doing this movie. Yeah, like it was. It seems weird. Like, oh yeah, we want to do like be something a little different. It's like you wanted your Guardians of the Galaxy, but you didn't know how to do it because you don't have that. But you do have it used in the right way, like. You just went like, oh, let's like do Suicide Squad, but then you didn't even do like the right Suicide Squad. Like James did it better because he had a very large cast that he eliminated real fucking quick. Very quickly, yeah. Um, but then he went and he went full comic book with it. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. the right way. He they fuck a giant starfish, dude. Like a mm-hmm. space starfish, space fish, starfish. I don't know how to say that. Space starfish, space right? Starfish. Yeah. It's gotta be a space starfish, right? It's Not really. A starfish from space. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it's on Earth, so it's a space starfish versus like a starfish. Um, but like, it just got fan. Like, you know, obviously he had the fucking he had the shark. He, you know, 
<laughs> it's, pretty, uh, it's a giant talking shark. It, this shit's fucked up. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, like when in like the the most crazy thing that David did in his was he had a giant fiery monster skeleton thing, and then he had the little, like weird little CG monster witch thing at the end. But it's like, mm-hmm. bro, dude, he had a he had a talking shark to eight people. Mm-hmm. That shit's fucked up, bro. Yeah. Like that's and then they they like I said they fought a giant space starfish. So I mean that's pretty ridiculous. Um, but also he killed. So many of them at the beginning. Yeah. So many of them. Um, but, yeah, anyhow. And then he killed a bunch of them throughout it, too. Uh, but, yeah, no, it just, it just I don't know. It's, it seems odd that they would look back that far and, like, say, hey, you know what? Let's bring this back from 2016. It's like, we are, we are encroaching 10 years on this motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like, it's time to give up on that. Yeah. And like you, to your point they're like they're, they've moved on mm-hmm. like so far, like James isn't even trying to keep from, for what we know so far, his version of it out inside the regular continuity. He's willing to keep it outside with like, you know, peacemaker and all that fun stuff like that. It's like, bruh, come on, come on. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But anyhow, uh, I think that's all I have. Yeah. That's it for me. Cool. Uh, this has been Comes Naturally. We have been Joe. I have been Cody. And as usual, you fuckers just came naturally.